on Saturday. It is quite good to get a bit of a break from all the international cricket that we've been watching on our television sets and focus on our local cricket, which indeed is the uh, nursery for all the international stuff. With me tonight, I'm very happy to welcome back to, into the fray of things Ryan Hines, the Barbados and West Indies middle order batsman who has been injured for uh, quite some time. We saw in that Digicel first test match, he was even uh, injured to the extent he had to get a runner. And with me, Conde Riley, first vice president of the Barbados Cricket Association to talk about the season. First things first, Ryan, how are you feeling? Um, I have to correct something that was said in the report earlier. You did tell me earlier today that you were playing on Saturday, but you got a call late this evening to play in uh, the professional match in Trinidad and Tobago, and you have opted to play there, I guess, to get back on the international scene. So you will, in fact, not be playing on Saturday, but it's going to be the first match that you'll be playing since that injury when you pulled the hamstring. How are you feeling now, and how are things looking towards the Australian series? Well, good night, Barry. Good night, viewers. Thanks for having me on this show once again. Well, I guess it's unfortunate that I'm not turning out for Empire this weekend because Jason Hill is really looking forward for my services. You know, I actually have received a call from Ram Narayan. He had asked me to, if I'll, if I'll make myself available to play in the 2020 tournament that they had organized. And I said, well, yes. And then I contacted Jason, and Jason was obviously a bit disappointed. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, we are missing a few players who um, have overseas contracts. Who are you missing this year? You have um, Javon Searles, mm -hmm. Ram Ryan Nurse, Kevin Stout. I'll send the holder. Wow, that's that's four good players. Yes, basically nucleus of Empire. So who does who who will Empire bring into the fray this year as uh, as newcomers that should be good prospects? Well, actually, you have a young guy that's very talented, Antonio Greenwich. You know who may still playing for um, Conway Schools. And, you know, he expressed his interest in playing for Empire, and you know we we welcome him with, with open arms there at the club and. You know, Jason, obviously, J the both Jasons, along with my brother Jason, who had a pretty decent season. Hopefully, he can get over 500 runs and get called trails. I'd be happy for him, mm -hmm. um, along with Sean Graham. So, hopefully, these guys, you know, can step up to the plate and, and, and really perform. Because, you know, speaking to, to Kevin today on the internet, he said he, he hopes that the guys, guys can really put on a really good show this season. First Vice President Conde Riley, the players want to put on a good show. We're missing some top players in the first round. What does the BCA have planned for the start of this new season on Saturday? Well, Barry, thanks for having me. Um, good night, viewers. I think the most significant thing the BCA is doing this year is that we plan to have um, a paid coach for each first division team. Uh, only this evening we met with the, the clubs and prospective coaches. And we hope that by um, middle of June, end of June, each first division club will have a, a paid coach um, looking after a program which will be designed by the Director of Coaching um, at the Centre of Excellence. What we want to do is to have a, a structured program in each First Division Club where the coach, the employed coach, will be um, making sure that practice is not just um, practice but proper practice. So hence we decided that we will go that route. Um, we're going to utilise some of the funds from the Stanford 2020 um, um, tournament. Um, no, the funding from them, mm -hmm. and um, we sincerely hope that that will bring um, most of the clubs um, on stream in terms of where we want to take um, cricket um, at the domestic level, and we also are aiming that when guys come to trials, the, the fitness levels will be um, at the level that the Barbers coach wants them. You know, well, what was happening is that guys come to trials and they're at a level that you have to move them now to the regional level of fitness. Mm -hmm. So what we hope to do is to bleep test them, establish where they are, so that when they come to trials, um, they're supposed to be above that. So you'd know then that the coaches have been working and the guys have been working during the course of the season. These coaches will report to the director of coaching and our CEO, and will give reports on the respective players who are earmarked and so on. How are you going to select the coaches? Are the clubs going to decide who are going to be the paid coaches? Or has the BCA earmarked 16 coaches already to be uh, affiliated with each club? What we did, um, we had a shortage of coaches. Um, our intention is, coming to the Cricket Development Committee, um, to have a coach in each secondary school. Um, you know the 22 secondary schools and we have 16 first division clubs. So what we did um, in February, we ran a level two um, coaching um, seminar <coughs> for guys who are Barbados players and West Indian, past West Indian Barbados and West Indian players because there's a criteria set by the ICC and for your accreditation 